If you've gotten into the habit of scrolling past the nonstop breaking news alerts dominating your notifications, I get it. Headline fatigue is very real. With so many names and titles, it's almost impossible to keep them straight, especially when it comes to these latest impeachment hearings. That's why we're dedicating today's episode to all things impeachment. First up, Neil Katiel. Neil was the acting solicitor general under President Obama and drafted the Justice Department rules that guided the Mueller investigation. So yeah, when it comes to investigating government officials, Neil really knows what he's talking about. Neil, welcome. Thank you. It's great to be here. Let me ask you um, if you could break it down. How many articles of impeachment are there uh, right now? And, and, you know, how is this different from a criminal trial? Yeah, so the main differences are that it, th it's not, of course, about crimes. So, so that's the first thing. Right. It's about really, is there an abuse of power by right. the president? Is the president putting his, nation, his personal interests above those of the nation? That's really, I think, the best definition of what a high crime and misdemeanor is. And that can come in assorted shapes and forms? Exactly. And so here, I think they're basically kind of three buckets that um, uh, of offenses when we think about Ukraine. And, you know, there may be others involving the Mueller investigation and so on. I personally don't think Congress should get into all of that here, but, you know, Right, because be there's some indication that he might have lied on his questionnaire. Exactly. The, the House General Counsel in this week in the D.C. court said they believe that there may be evidence that the president lied to Mueller and that, of course, is itself a criminal offense. So there may be other things going on. We'll have to see. Um, in terms of the process, there is a big difference. I mean, the House does what's called impeachment, which is like the formal indictment uh, of the president, like saying he did something wrong. And that is just by a majority vote. And that's kind of like a grand jury in the criminal context. And then you've got if the House impeaches, then it goes to the Senate for the punishment phase and uh, and the kind of trial about what, you know, what, what the president did and is it, you know, a convictable offense. Um, and there it's a two-thirds vote of the Senate to convict. And unlike a criminal trial in which it's a jury of 12 peers who don't have any prejudices about the case, this is decided by 100 senators, many of whom have already said certain things about their view of the case. So it is quite different in that sense. It's a mix of a legal proceeding and a political proceeding. Would President Trump ever be asked to go to the Senate to testify? Oh, absolutely. And, and would he be compelled to? Uh, I, I think you can't formally compel him in the sense of, uh, you, you know, attach criminal sanctions to him, but you can create an adverse inference. You can say, look, Mr. President, if you don't come forward and tell the truth, we'll take that as an admission that these accusations against you and these articles of impeachment are accurate. And you had asked before about what that case would look like. What are those articles of impeachment? And it seems to me Article 1 is kind of abuse of power. The president saying, I am going to cut off congressionally appropriated aid, aid that our taxpayers approved, to another country to benefit myself. Count number two is bribery. The idea that we were talking about earlier, seeking something of value for yourself in order to exchange, in order for the uh, performance of an official act, and it would be called bribery. In Absolutely, this case. and indeed, one one of the interesting things, Katie, is that the Constitution actually says there are it defines impeachable offenses as treason, bribery, or other high crimes and misdemeanors. It's actually in the Constitution itself as one of the two things our founders said was impeachable. And cited by Alexander Hamilton, as you said earlier, about a foreign nation. Exactly. Is that in the Constitution, too? Well, th what's in the Constitution is just the word bribery. Uh, no, the foreign nation, what you mentioned that Alexander Hamilton used as an example. So it's an example of what is an impeachable offense, but itself is not in the text of the Constitution. Like much of the Constitution, they use more capacious words, like other high crimes and misdemeanors. And then we have methods to try and understand what those words are. Here are and the in, Federalist in some Papers. Of Ham and, and some of Hamilton's writings. Exactly. So Hamilton's writings in the Federalist Papers, indeed Federalist 68, I think, is the critical one, um, make, make this argument about foreign uh, interference. You sure it's not 67? I'm just <laughs> <kidding>. <laughs> and then, uh, And then the last article of impeachment, and I think today we saw a lot of evidence of this, is obstruction of justice. The idea 
that the president is gagging all these witnesses from coming forward. He's saying no documents can come. And we started this interview, Katie, with you asking about the Ambassador Sondland testimony and its significance. And we've talked a lot about the substantive significance, like what did Sondland say about Trump and Giuliani and so on. But there was a procedural significance to what he said today, which is really important. He said, and again, this is Trump's guy, he's saying the president is acting wrongly by not allowing me to look at my emails, not provide them to you, not provide my call records. He's preventing me from all of this, and that's preventing the American people from learning the truth. And that is quintessential obstruction, obstruction of, of justice. justice.